What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to show you a few different ways that you can use the extension joint push pull to create recesses in your objects. If you're looking for more great SketchUp extensions, make sure you check out my SketchUp extensions guide at thesketchupessentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I'm gonna use multiple different extensions in this video. Um, the one that's gonna be most important is called joint push push pull by Fredo6 and uh, you can see that at the top of my screen up here that's basically an extension that allows you to push pull multiple faces at once and so I will link to that and to all of the other extensions that I use in this tutorial in the notes down below but uh, what I wanted to do is show you an easy way to create some recesses on faces inside of SketchUp so sometimes you've got a curved face like this one and you want to make that a little bit more interesting and let's say for example that we were to in here just for the sake of this video and we were to unsoften some of these edges we would select these edges uncheck the box for soft and then turn hidden geometry back off you can see how now that geometry is in here and it's broken up separately from the rest of the geometry in this sphere but let's say you wanted to recess this into this object well that wouldn't work because you can't push pull curved or smooth surfaces and the reason for that if you turn hidden geometry back on for a second is you can see that those surfaces are actually made up of individual faces and so when you try to push pull them like if I was to push pull this one for example you can see how it push pulls at kind of a different vector than the other one and so um, SketchUp doesn't really know what to do with those faces and how to like merge them together after we do that and how they affect each other um, it just doesn't really have that built in However, with the extension joint push pull from Fredo 6, you can actually do that. You can push pull multiple faces at once. And so the way that you would do that is you would start by clicking on this button for joint push pull. And you can see how joint push pull is uh, gonna have a bunch of different options at the top of the page. One thing I will note is you're probably gonna wanna click this blue set of three arrows for more options so that you can see all of these options. Um, but when I do this, when I come in here, and we're gonna go ahead and just set this to no privilege plane for right now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and I'm gonna click on this button for thicken just to show you what this does so when I click on the button for thicken and then I single click on this and then I click again what this is gonna do is this is gonna push pull this curved face outward and so when you do that what that does is that's acting like the normal push-pull does in the sense that if I turn x-ray mode on for a second, um, this is leaving your original face in here and creating a new face. So if I hide that face, you can see how the original face is still in here. However, I'm going to undo this. And so that option works great for push-pulling objects outward because you want this to create a new face. However, if you have thicken selected when you do this and you try to push pull something inward, you can see how this is a little bit problematic. And I'm going to turn x-ray mode on just so you can see what this is doing. Um, but if I was to click in here and create a new face on the inside, so if I was to joint push pull this inside and then delete this, or you can see how this keeps the original face and you don't necessarily want that because you're trying to create a recess in here so what we're going to do instead is we're going to click on this face we're going to activate joint push pull and we're going to click on this button for push pull erase original face and so when we do that and then if we click on this face move our mouse and then click again you can see how this actually push pulls this inward and it erases the face that was in here before um, so having that option checked when you're push pulling something inward is going to be really important and so we can use this to do other things as well like let's say for example I'm going to use the extension quad face tools from TomTom Tom, and I'm not going to get too deep into how this works other than it uses what's known as quads which are these these four-sided shapes that are hidden in here in order to give you a bunch of different functions and so what this will do is this will allow you 
to add edge loops in here um, because what happens is when shapes are modeled out of quads they're mathematically more predictable and so you can use tools like this one and I'm probably gonna make a video about this coming up pretty soon but for right now um, quad face tools is a really interesting tool that allows you to do this and the reason that I wanted to use that is because you can see how that allowed me to create these two bands on this sphere really quickly well now I can come in here with the extension joint push pull and I can single click and then I can move my mouse and click again in order to push pull this inward. And one thing you're going to notice about this when you do this is I was able to push pull both of these edges in but you're going to notice that what they did is they moved downward. So we didn't want them to move downward, we just wanted them to move straight across the Z axis but in this case they moved down and that's just kind of a function of the way this works. Well what I want to do instead is I want to create a recess that goes straight in. So I'm going to undo what I just did there and I'm going to click on the button for Z axis. So you see how when I have these two edges selected and I have the joint push pull tool activated, you get an option in here for plane where you can set the plane constraint. And so when I set the plane constraint, if I click on the Z axis, you can see how this kind of locks my cursor to the blue axis. Well now, I can single click and move my mouse in and instead of this moving up and down, this just moves straight in and out. So it gives you this straight recess instead of one that moves up and down. And so then you can kind of start getting interesting with what you do with this. Like for example, um, let's say we were to add some more edges in here with quad face tools and then turn hidden geometry back off. We could actually select these two ridges or we would have to close these in, but we could select those as well. But we could start using joint push pull in order to push pull these in as well. So you could start creating these ridges in a way that could go all the way around here. So this gives you a whole bunch of options for creating different kinds of recesses. And so we could do the same thing with this handle, but in this case, if we set this to no privilege plane and then single click and move this, you're gonna get some kind of weird results um, just because of the way this is mathematically trying to move this stuff in and out. So again, it's gonna be really important for you to set a privileged plane. So in this case, we're gonna set this one on the vertical plane, the red axis, and then I can move my mouse and I can type in something like negative one and inset that in and you can see how that gives me that uniform inset along that red axis. So by using the privilege plane on your axis, you can use this to really quickly create things like these ridges and other things like that. And so another application of quad face tools is if we turn on hidden geometry, you're going to notice that this shape is made up of a number of quads. Well, that means we can use quad face tools. And again, quads are four sided shapes in order to insert some rings so or loops. And so to do that, all I have to do is click on this edge and then insert a loop here. Click on this edge and insert a loop here. And you could once you have this loop created, you could kind of move this up and down a little bit if you wanted to in order to adjust the way that this looks or you could select this whole face in here, activate joint push pull. And in this case, we'd want to do this along the Z axis, not along the X axis. So when I move this, this would allow me to offset this inward. So again, just for the settings, we're set on classic or um, push pull. Your plane is a Z. And all we had to do was single click and move that in in order to be able to move these in and out to create those different recesses. And so the last thing you might want to do with this is you might want to use this in order to um, like on a wall like this, create a bunch of recesses. Like let's say you have some kind of like a tool in joint or something like that. And I'm just going to use x-ray mode to help me select all of these. Well, one thing you might notice about this if you try this is if you activate joint push pull on this one, 
even if you're on the Z axis, then you single click and you move your mouse, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get some kind of weird results. Like see how this kind of twisted this, even though we didn't have, um, even though we had it set on the Z axis? Well, the reason for that is because there's an option in here called outside neighbor influences directions at border. And so what this is doing, when you try to push pull this in, is the border of the other edges is selecting or uh, is affecting the edges that you have selected. But if you go in here and you uncheck this box, and so if you do this again, if you single click and move this in, you're gonna notice this is gonna erase out all of your faces. And I'm not 100% sure why it's doing this, other than there's an option in here for your borders um, where it's saying you only have borders at your contours. Well, if you go down and you click the button for grid instead, so your borders are a grid, and then type in negative 0.5, and hit the enter key, you can see how you can use this to um, inset all of these edges really quickly and it doesn't erase out any of your faces. So kind of a long convoluted way to explain, but just know that this tool has that option in here where you can offset things inward like this really quickly. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know joint push pull could do some of this stuff? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.